my legs are trashed from yesterday. I think it was a, well, I did a, I did some three plate RDLs on the Smith machine and usually I've been sticking to two plates and I think I might have pulled something a little, not, uh, not in like a real injury kind of way, but just like just minor, a little kind of up where my hamstrings tie into my glutes. Because on the last set, I was going to kind of feel a little. But, you know, that's its own thing. What I really mean is like my quads in general, because the quad portion of the lift was pretty fucking dense. Two sets of leg extensions, which I didn't really love that leg extension. So, like, they were, it was good. Those two sets served as like a perfect warm up to get into heavy pressing, but you know, they were just all right sets. Like they're, they're nothing magical there. The real fucking bread and butter was the Smith machine squats and the hip press sets afterward. Two sets of five plate squats and then four sets of um, like eight plates on either side of um, that hip press leg press thing, which I'm not exactly sure how heavy that is. Like I would have to, uh, You'd have to like put a scale in between your feet and the pad and then lift the weight and see. But it was definitely up there. And four sets of those. Yeah, I'm fucking feeling them. It's, uh, I, I don't mean to talk about legs on chest day, but this will be my last little thing before I get into it. I kind of feel like there's a certain necessity of just accrued damage from a leg day, especially for quads. Because, you know, I could do one crazy set of like, uh, I mean, the craziest ever, like a six-plate squat for eight reps. Um, I don't think I could do that today. I need, uh, I need to get re-exposed to that much weight. But that one crazy set, at least for quads, something about the size of the muscle, it just doesn't beat five lighter sets, similar, like, intensities, which, you know, but you can still, like, actually overload to that point of, uh, you know, fatigue, right? So... It's almost like, well, all I'm trying to say is I need to add more pressing work into my leg days, which I think is gonna have a pretty, pretty serious leg, uh, let's just say leg gains upgrade, but only time will tell. One good workout, you're not gonna notice a difference. This is a sort of a minor acceleration of gains, which you'll only notice over time. But chest today, a little bit of a later one, which I'm okay with. I uh, I feel like I'm kind of getting tired of all the fucking daytime lifts, you know? Like, I uh, I think I'm getting kind of annoyed of how bright it is when I'm working out, as weird as that kind of sounds. Maybe I'm just like a night owl at heart in terms of these workouts. But, plan for today, chest, definitely... Well, actually, I might do the same thing as last chest day and really bias some of the uh, some of the cable fly work first before moving on to anything like crazy heavy. And the primary reason for that is just because usually I start with heavy pressing and then move on to fly base sort of stuff. Okay. So I think a little, a little change of roux, it'll do me good. So... Let's just get into it, man. No more chatting. Gym should be empty, if not close to it. So maybe I can do some kind of funky supersets without having to worry about who's on what piece of equipment. But let's just get in there. Looks like I'm really fucking changing it up more than I thought. So if you've watched a lot of these chest days, anything single arm is kind of fucking few and far between. But I don't want to just start with a set of like bent over cable press by grabbing both cables because then I you can only press to here right whereas if I'm holding one cable on its own I can kind of press even further kind of over which you know if you do it you'll kind of feel it. it's just a certain kind of extra burning sensation but I might just do one of these but as a starter I think changing it up is going to be good for me and with anything cable related pressing wise you're not going to catch me pressing like this much i'm trying to be at least neutral ish to even a little underhanded because when i'm like this front delts just helps me minimize their activation when i go over like this i mean my, i may as well be doing a front delt workout and a chest workout 
but this will be just kind of flat press style, whole chest focus, whatever. As many clean reps as I can do, plus some maybe dirty partials. Switch to the left side and go from there. Or actually, maybe I should start with the left side first. The left side is actually a little weaker than the right one. I might actually want one more of these. <laughs> like it doesn't have that tension on my chest that like a heavy set of bench would, but the burn that I'm getting, and especially upper chest, I think I, I gotta do one more. And then we can move on. <sighs> <sighs> Now let's move on. Ish. Not sure what. Maybe more conventional flies? I gotta think about it. I'm trying to chart a new course for chess today. See if I like it. I was 50-50 between more cable action or Smith machine. And the Smith machine was taken, choice kits made for me. But moderate weight, this is still gonna be a squeezing focus set. Like, uh, honestly, triceps was the fucking, what, what do they call it? The drop that broke the camel's back. 
whatever. But doing triceps, especially with the rope, light squeezing, and by light, I mean weight I can work with, and doing a real solid stretch, slow eccentric, and then a burning hold at the bottom, I've been seeing extra tricep gains. So I think I'm on a squeezing kick all over the place. So this is not to say this is my final training style. It's just kind of how I want to try it for a little bit. But as long as the intensity is there and I keep gaining weight, then I know it's working. But this will be the same as the last one. Moderate speed, minor hold, really squeeze, big stretch, maybe some partials after. It needs to be a little more declined-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's do some pressing. Yeesh. Let's move three plates around, goddammit. here. <clears throat> Same shit, goddammit. I'm trying my damnedest to keep my shoulders pinned behind me. Because if I do this, and like my shoulder blades are open, 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 I'm so prone to this kind of pressing and working my shoulders, it sucks. So that's what I'm thinking here. Yeah. 
Drop sec, come on. Let's go back to some kind of cable action. Okay. Let's finish this shit up here. I'm thinking front of body flies, drop the weight, decline flies, really burn out, hose down, roll. find some lighting all right so weight not that crazy you know I mean very moderate kind of shit very squeezing very burning focused a little bit of heft with those uh, with the inclined Smith but you know I mean nothing insane which I'm starting to think is the fucking answer man I mean the chest fatigue and kind of pump I'm getting from a lightish like it's still hefty but a lightish Set of cable flies, squeeze, big stretch. I mean, dude, it's just fucking killer. But why, uh, why explain it with words when we can simply get the uh, get the visual that'll back it up? Boy, so we're probably around the halfway point, bulk-wise. So, unfortunately, that means I'm only gonna get softer from here on out. But the enlightened lifter understands that's the cost of a real bulk. And it's not like I'm gonna, it's not like I can't diet down later. Honestly, the beefing up part, that's tricky. Getting that muscle in the first place, that's the puzzle. Dieting down to reveal it, that's just a matter of fucking uh, mindset and whether or not you can handle a calorie deficit for a few short months. But, Let's just hit some, uh, hit some chest focus flexes and freaking roll. Oh my gosh. It's fucking hard to hold your breath. Only minutes after Jess was fucking complete. But right, let's see a few more. Hey. We got some spectators on the side, but extra fucking wide. A few more, then we scram. Oh, and then one obligatory, most muscular. Oh my gosh. 
out of here. And with that, chest is complete. I can feel a pretty solid fucking burn. And something I meant to mention earlier, but I kind of forgot. When I was doing those one arm kind of uh, like cable press squeeze sort of focus sets right at the beginning, and I'm sitting here like feeling my chest as I'm doing them, like that full kind of fucking contraction, I was feeling all sorts of different kind of fibers in there going crazy. Really kind of hyped me up because that means that I know when I die it down later, I get to see all those fucking fibers be revealed. But yeah, I mean, I can't emphasize enough. It's like you have to, you have to sort of give up that visual appeal for a period of time, you know. And I don't mean get like fucking insanely high body fat perma bulked, but I just mean you, know, you can't be diced and make gains. You know, it's just not going to happen like that. You can be diced and stay the same size for a pretty long fucking while, you know, as long as it's not like. Well, as long as it's within reason, of course, right? Like, I'm not talking show ready, but, I mean, there's guys out there. If you got a solid diet, you're doing your cardio, you work out hard on the regular, and you're getting enough sleep, I mean, you could stay like a 7% body fat year-round, but you're just not going to be gaining any muscle, you know? And then, you know, somebody like that is going to have a really rigid fucking uh, eating routine. So, not necessarily something that everybody is really kind of down for. But it can totally be done, and it is done a lot. I mean, there's a lot of guys posting everything where they've been, not like spotlight. I don't think anybody's ever like in the crazy spotlight. But like, you know, big name characters. But, you know, they've been lifting for like the last kind of five years. I guess the only reason we know about them because like they talk about it and they post their shit. But it's like they're the same dude that whole time. And... I mean, there's definitely guys who they're like, this is my, I want to stay this big. I don't need to get any bigger than this. This is perfect. And if that's them, like if that's you, bad fucking ass. Honestly, hats off to you because I, uh, I put myself through a lot of trouble to get to some kind of arbitrary end point of size that I want to reach instead of just being happy with where I'm at now. So maybe that's a little, maybe that's a little introspection I should put more effort into. But come on, I got to get 22 inch arms, goddamn it. But for anybody that really would not mind bigger arms or bigger legs or just being bigger and stronger in general, a lot of the times that benefit, that reward, it's not, it, well, at least for them, it doesn't end up being worth the cost of eating more calories, getting softer, getting leaner, losing your abs, losing some ab veins. I mean, especially when you throw social media into the mix, like, dude, being jacked is a direct fucking link to better, like, engagement of posts. You know, if I see a video of some dude doing dumbbell curls with a tank on, and, like, he's just a regular kind of character, whatever, swipe ahead. And it's not even about being big or fucking small. You can be a 160-pound dude, and if you're totally diced, and you can see all sorts of striations in there, I mean, that's cool, right? I mean, it's just fucking, because it's difficult, you know, it's not easy to be that lean, but I think the issue is if you ever get sucked into that sort of thought process or like a loop of like, okay, I'm lean right now. Uh, so I guess now I'm kind of imitating like a fitness influencer, but it's like, okay, I'm really lean right now, dude, all my, I'm getting extra likes on Instagram because I'm really lean. All right. I got to stay lean, man. Can't lose my abs. And then fuck man, you're never going to make real gains. So there's a certain, um, and over the last year and a half I have seen it like fall out of favor which I mean really good thing but it used to be in like there was a huge I mean not like specific but you just see it if you were watching a lot of fitness stuff where everybody was hyping up getting fucking diced on the regular even more than normal so I would see so many like um like newer fitness character posts or just smaller accounts and they were just all trying to get as fucking like all trying to get as lean as possible but it's like dude you just started working out six months ago you don't need to be on a starvation diet to try to see ab veins you haven't even hit 225 bench yet you know it's, it's like there's there's sort of a disconnect in the thought process to the point where i was um and then i was like extra passionate about it too when i was saying it because when i was first making these videos 
Dude, that was the first time I, I get to really talk about, uh, I mean, all sorts of shit going on, fitness-wise, you know? And I was really putting my opinion out there. And I was, uh, but I still believe it. Like, there is a certain perversion of leanness which can take away from your kind of pursuit of size. And you can't put the fucking cart before the horse. Size is going to come before that leanness. Because really dieting down and really kind of showing off the muscle that you've built up over a period of time, you can't do that in reverse. You know, you can't skip from A to C, right? You can't jump straight to cut without passing through the bulk. And you don't even have to do a dedicated bulking phase. Even just main gaining. I mean, main gaining for the first three years of working out, I think is totally fucking legit. Just because, you know, your newbie gains factors are still going to be in play for a while. As long as you're eating enough to support your training. Like, just adding working out and nothing else with a reasonable intensity over the course of a year, as long as you actually do your workouts like five, six times a week or so, you'll be a totally different dude. Size-wise, strength-wise, whatever else, like, people will take notice. You know, the only issue is nobody really wants to do it. At least in the scheme of things. You know, I mean, how many people did you run into today who you could tell they worked out? Which, that's not the point, you know, you work out for your own kind of uh, personal benefits. But still, you know, it's just something you can, uh, something to keep an eye on. But kind of losing my track of thought. So, what I was trying to say there, if you want to be big and lean... You gotta get big first. And by big, I don't mean 260, right? I was pretty fucking satisfied being 200 pounds at a pretty, maybe like 12% body fat or so. And then being like a really lean 185. Like, you gotta remember, being reasonably muscular, like uh, like a lean-ish 180, dude, that is solid, right? The only reason I'm taking it even further than that is because I'm crazy. So, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind as you listen to all my advice and stuff. Because a lot of everything I'm saying, it applies to anybody. It applies to the beginner. It applies to the guy who's been working out for five years. Because I'm not saying you need to do some magic, like find a Shaolin monk and learn the uh, learn the five tenets of muscle building of the ancient Chinese empire. I'm just telling you, if you're doing biceps, do your bicep sets as hard as you can. Get a solid squeeze. Make sure you got reasonable range of motion. Go home, eat enough food to recover, drink enough water and electrolytes so you're hydrated, get a good amount of sleep, and repeat it the next day, and don't drive yourself crazy with routine that you uh, can't keep up with. You know, this, the basic outlines of working out, really not that complicated, and they apply to everybody at any stage. And I guess another one that I didn't really reference is just having a... Uh, keeping an elastic mind, you know, be open to change because that's what's going to fucking happen, man. Your body is going to change and your response to certain kinds of training is going to change over time. So the beast of gains, because that's what you're trying to fucking battle. You're trying to, you know, fight against your body's instinct to just stay the same size and add a stimulus. It's hard to fucking focus. There's like a motorcycle guy doing a he didn't do a wheelie, but he's really revving it. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Holy shit. If you're riding a motorcycle, you better be fucking careful. I'll tell you that. But getting back to what I'm saying. So the beast of gains, like that fucking sort of, uh, you know, the act of going through all this training and all this eating and all this fucking sleeping and everything else and balancing your routine, it's not stagnant. It changes over time. So things like your workout intensity, Making sure you're properly hydrated, getting enough rest, eating all your fucking food, you know, not purely eating random junk. If you are going to have some sweets or stuff, at least make sure it has a use in whatever you're doing. Like if you're trying to bulk up or something, right? Get enough protein in. But when it comes to like how you approach it with your like week by week balancing out with your life, maybe having to adjust your training due to like certain injuries or potential imbalances that may arise or may fade depending on how long you've been training that's where you got to have an open mind and you've got to be on the lookout right no uh you got to remember man if you're playing balloons tower defense dude you think you're killing it you're popping all the red ones all the blue ones you can even get some green ones in there but out of nowhere camo passes straight through you right you got to be open to adapt to this kind of shit so that's where for a period of time 
don't even fucking stress it. I mean, there's videos of guys like in depth, like four dudes on a, like on a zoom call doing a podcast about training, like the best way do you got to do this. And, and it's like, there's, I'm not trying to devalue the things that they're saying for like the more kind of advanced dude, but they're talking about like a 5% or like maybe 10% max, like change in stimulus. Whereas if you're actually focusing on something like the core components of your training, right? Food, sleep, just your training intensity on its own. That's where the magic is, right? That's where I think those three sort of tenants deserve the most focus. And you barely hear about it, you know? And I don't mean people don't talk about dieting, you know, and people don't talk about sleeping. But I barely hear clips or anything else where guys are really putting emphasis on the fact that if you don't get enough sleep on the regular, or like if your average hours is below, like, eh, I mean, obviously below seven, but if you're, uh, if you're rocking like six and below, if you got cloned right now, exactly, but that clone got eight hours of sleep, he's going to beat you gains wise. If you got cloned and the clone actually drank enough water and was properly hydrated, he's going to beat you gains wise in the long run. If that fucking clone guy, you know, if you're fucking uh, reverse Todd, if that's your name, is actually killing it with his diet and getting in a proper amount of protein and being well uh, energized with reasonably sourced carbs and fats and everything else. Plus, he brings it to his training and he doesn't just go through it. Two guys who started at the exact same position and in this hypothetical, legitimately that the exact same dude, one year, even six months, they could be completely unrecognizable. Well, maybe, I guess if they were like basically twins, maybe you'd still tell. They'd be completely differentiable, is what I mean to say, you know? So if that's the case, then that's what I want to focus on, right? If I'm dehydrated, I'm upset. That's going to throw me off because I know, like, dude, I'm leaving games on the table. Why didn't I fucking drink, like, four liters of water today? Minimum. Like, oh, shit. Or, I mean, if I don't eat enough before my training sessions, I'm going to feel it. It's, it's just a matter of fact. So part of that is just over time experience. Cause of course, after you do like, I'm coming up on, I think 2000 workouts or so, not including like sports kind of workouts from before, but like 2000 lifts, like that's uh, it's like I'm a fucking AI model and you get trained by shit over time. It's like, I've got a sense where I know like, okay, my recovery was Jack did not eat enough food, didn't drink enough. I'm, not only am I going to have a shitty lift, I could be more prone to injury, you know? And that's the last thing I want. I'm trying to completely mitigate the risk of that so I can just continue to focus on making stimulating workouts on repeat and stay in the green gains-wise. So that's what I think is really kind of most important to kind of perpetuate. But it's just not very cool, you know? It's uh, The fact of the matter is you're not going to get a bazillion views on your TikTok account if you post a video where it says you need to get your eight hours of sleep a, a day, put down your phone, stop playing with the most addictive fucking uh, piece of technology ever created and uh, just go to sleep and think about nothing. You never see that, you know? So it's, uh, that's kind of where you got to take some responsibility. Oh shit. Baby raccoon on the side of the road. He'll be all right. I, uh, I hope. That's where you got to fucking take some responsibility for your own results, you know. It's uh, it's always easy to just blame an outward situation or just... Uh, da, 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 da. Dude, what the fuck? I'd rather have to explain why I put too much time and energy into the gym later on than have to say, Oh, uh, well, the reason I didn't get big enough or the reason I didn't get the gains that I wanted, well, it was because of this guy. He got in my way. If it weren't for him, I'd be fucking, I'd be Chris Bumstead, Ronnie Coleman Jr. You know, come on. All right, so if you can get the basics in order, just by working out on the regular, you will get smarter with your training. You will make workouts that are going to match your build specifically in a way where you can really get a solid amount of fatigue and stimulated workload in on the regular. And before you know it, you're going to be fucking driving to four different gyms for the four different workouts that you do per week because each gym has a different set of machines because you like that one 
instead of that one and you like this it's which to some people may be like the bad future I'm like <laughs> but either way either way you can't fucking lose track of the basics is all I'm trying to get at there so didn't mean to didn't mean to really dog on you if you're doing that already you know for the portion of guys who actually already know that they don't need me to say it you know they know what I'm talking about so full day of eating is yeah either uh, I don't want to say tomorrow for sure but within the next few hold me to it hold me freaking to it so I'll see you tomorrow for back <sighs> back's a good one back's a good lift do a crazy wide ass lat spread hopefully wake up at 272 pounds break a, break a new weight PR and just keep this ball going now that I'm talking about my chest striations, I'm getting all excited to die down. But I'm, uh, I've got enough patience to wait until springtime. So, I'll see you tomorrow for some back.